will graciously receive. Because that's why I put the workshops together as I did. It's more a matter of me just giving and just having complete faith that whatever. You receive what? Whatever. Exchange. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I know that I don't, it's not always a direct, I give to you, you give to me, okay, kind of thing. Right. A lot of times it's I give and give and give, and while I'm giving over here, all this stuff starts showing up over here. So um, anytime that I can put that into work in my life and get more evidence and more proof to satisfy my mind, mm -hmm. then, you know, one more example of it happening, then it just, it helps me out too. So, And one of the things that I come across a lot, because I do the life coaching as well, one of the things I come across a lot is people finding excuses why they can't make change. Well, I don't have the time to come to your workshop. It sounds great, but, you know, Saturdays just don't work for me. Or I would love to do it, but, you know, after the holidays, I don't have the money to make myself a priority. And mm -hmm. if you don't ever change what you're doing, you're never going to change what you're getting. Right. So that's why I decided every other Saturday I'll record all the sessions. So if somebody can't physically be here, they can still plug in. And I'll let you give what you want to give to me. So now you have no excuses, because it's not a money requirement, it's not a time requirement. <coughs> it's just up to you. Do you want to change or do you right. not want to change? Right. Yeah, um, That's how it works. It's, it's when we get caught up in how things are going to happen that it becomes a big old confusing struggle. And when you can just say, okay, this is what I want to do, and I'm just going to surrender how it's going to happen, or I'm going to surrender even being attached to if it happens. When you don't need it to happen, that's when it happens with ease. And I think that that's what holds a lot of people back in their business, a lot of people back in really anything that they're looking to accomplish is they, they get up and caught up in the how. How is it going to happen? And you want it to happen so bad or you need it to happen. Like I need so many clients in order to pay my bills or I need so many sales in order to you know, qualify for a bonus or go for a vacation or whatever it is. And in that needing, what you are sending out is lacking. So what you get created around you is an environment that reflects lacking and needing. But when you can say, oh, wouldn't that be awesome? I can just imagine how incredible that would be. And I trust that if I'm supposed to be there, I'm going to be there and how exciting it's going to be. And you just hold that picture of how exciting it's going to be, but not be attached to it actually occurring. That's when it happens. You're going to produce need. And when you're in fulfillment, I'm full regardless if this thing happens or not. But I'll be, you know, really, really excited if it does occur. Then you can hold on to that excitement and that energy, and then that's what you're bringing into it. You can act as if it's already occurred because you, you're not even, you're not even going after a thing. You're actually going after the experience. So if you can have the experience <coughs> now, then it just naturally is reflected in your life and occurring. Versus thinking that oh, when I have that, then I'll be filled, then you're not full yourself then, so that's that's what you continue to produce. Those are the little things, like with the secret and that kind of stuff, yeah, that well, people actually, right. leave out, or we don't think of. We're like, oh, just ask for what I want. Okay, this is what I want, because this is what I need. And we don't realize that what we're sending out is wanting and needing, instead of just simply being that which we want to have. Which, again, is all about the experience, which is controlled by your emotions, which we actually do have control over but we have to wake up to them before we can. Which brings me to our topic today about discovering that missing piece. Because that's what I think everybody's really searching for. You think that you're searching for that job or that partner or that clothes size or that um, material manifestation of something. But really what you're searching for is that inner peace. And we don't realize that. Um, I don't, it took me a long time to begin to realize that. It's not that carrot that's being dangled in front of you that you really desire. It's that fulfillment that your mind tells you you're going to experience when you actually have that carrot. So if you can get back into your body and get in touch with your emotions, then you can start to create it from within you instead of always needing that outside stimulant to make you fulfilled or make you happy or give you that peace of mind. So we think that we're searching for something that we're really not searching for. And what's so interesting is what we're searching for, it really is inside of us the entire time. But nobody's taught us to look in here or how to look in here. And a lot of times it's kind of scary to look in here. It's like, ooh, I've never looked in here before. What if I find some stuff that I don't like? Or what if I find some stuff that, you know, um, 
makes me an outsider or makes me different from other people. Or you peek and you're like, ooh. Yeah. Or maybe, you know what? I tried to go in there before and it just was not comfortable. So let me go see what this experience is like instead. And that's why I feel a lot of people search and search and search and search and search. And I've talked to a lot of people that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s that are like, you know, girlfriend, I've been asking for decades. What is my purpose or looking for it for decades? And I can't find it. I don't know what it is. And usually if I can follow that up with, what would it be? What, what would it be if you knew what it was? Or what's that thing that pops up, but as soon as it pops up, it's immediately overridden with, that ain't never going to happen. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Who are you to think that you're going to change the world? Who are you to think that you're going to make that big of a difference? Who are you to be on stage or make this money? Or sometimes it just jumps to, you know, well, who's going to walk the dog if I'm tied up and busy? You know, it, we jump to like this, trying to prepare for something that, that hasn't even happened. So when I had kind of searched everywhere externally, I felt, at least in, in the situation that I was facing, which my, my struggle, my, my big heartache that caught my attention was, luckily, it was just my weight issues and not being able to sustain a healthy weight and a balanced weight. And so I had done all the searching that I could do externally. I'd learned all about different foods and how they affect the body. And I had hit a point where it wasn't a lack of knowledge, it was a lack of implementation. And then once it was like, okay, I'm going to start applying the principles that I've heard people use. And I started doing little things like um, becoming aware where I had resistance in my life and deciding to get to the root of why, why am I resistant. Instead of just running in this default operation, I would start questioning all the choices that I made. Why, why did I say no to that offer, but I hopped right on this other offer? Why did I have a hesitation for this but not a hesitation for something else. And is the hesitation really because of the experience or am I trying to avoid something deeper within me? And that's where, when I could no longer kind of point a finger around, like you're the problem, you're the problem, you're the problem, or my childhood's the problem, or my relationship's the problem, whatever. When I could no longer point outwardly, it only left me. And then that's when everything started to shift. I mean, like, going from kind of slowly going up the gradients and going along my path and learning things to like exponential growth, like life changing all of a sudden perspective completely shifted in one day. And then a couple weeks later it happened again. And a couple weeks later I knew I was on to something because I had never experienced these kind of emotions and revelations. I've never had my mind open as much and my heart open as much. And I've never felt more in control. It's like it's tough to face that I am the issue behind all of my problems. But in doing that, if I am the issue in all of my problems, I can do something about that. I can't change the people that are driving down the road with me. I can't change the people that I'm waiting in line with. I can't change my spouse. I mean, you could, but you couldn't change him. Uh, I can't, can't change how people are going to react. All that I can do is choose how I'm going to react or how I'm going to respond. And transitioning in my life, going from a reactive state where something happens and I just go with my reflex, I, instead of going with that reflex or after I took that reflex, then I'd look back and be like, well, gosh, maybe that wasn't the most serving choice. Maybe that what appeared to serve me in the moment but overall, it led me exactly in the direction that I did not want to go. And when I started questioning what was happening instead of just reacting to it, then it got me to stop and take a moment, and then I could make a different choice. So the first thing, the first, I have searched my heart over and over again on where to begin this series on creating lasting change. And the first thing that came to my mind is awareness. You have to be aware of a situation before you can do anything with it. If you don't know that, to use health as an example, if you don't know that you have breast cancer, you can't do anything, you're not going to do anything to treat it at all. But once you become aware of it, then you can start doing your research and you can start checking out your options. Then you have resources and you have different paths that you can choose. So it's kind of the same thing. If, if I'm not aware that I'm the cause of all of my suffering, then how can I even address me? 
I'm going to spend all my time wandering around looking for something that I'm not ever going to find. So becoming aware of the choices that, that I make, the habits that I have, and the responses, my reactive modes, it helped me to, in the moment, choose a different response. But I had to get real. Like, I had to take the blinders off. And it started with, with food and with eating. Because, again, I didn't know what else to do other than to change things externally. And uh, I had to get, take the blinders off on what I ate and, like, really get real on what I ate. Not say, you know, I, I for the last probably six or seven years, I've maintained a pretty healthy diet. I have my ups and downs and my fluctuations with it. I did in the past. But overall, compared to the average American person, I didn't do fast food. I don't do, like, obvious junk food, cut out fried foods. Like, there's a lot of things that I don't do that a lot of people do. So I kind of had myself fooled. Like, well, at least I'm not as, as um, eating as poorly as, as so-and-so is. And at least my health is better than that person. At least I'm not as heavy as that person. And I had this comparison thing that I was doing. And when I had to get real and say, you know what, it really doesn't matter how big, how small, how healthy, unhealthy other people are. What really matters is myself. And since I'm the only self that I have, there's no other Chrissy Key running around the world that I'm aware of, then I really can't compare myself to anybody else. So I shifted my perspective from looking at what everybody else is doing and comparing myself as being too big, too small, too tall, too short, to I'm the only Chrissy Key, so what I got going on Regardless of what it looks like to anybody else or what any of the books say or what any of the people say or what anybody says, period. I have to be absolute perfection just how I am because there's no comparison. You can't prove that I'm not perfect because you can't set me next to another me and say, well, see, Chrissy, this is where you're off. Yeah. So since there's only me, I have to be here for a certain reason. Like, if there was 50 of me, I can see, like, slipping an extra one of me in. Like, maybe I, maybe I just got by, and maybe I was just a mistake. But there's just one of me. And if I really embrace the philosophy that I live by, that everything is perfect and everything is on purpose and everything has a bigger meaning and that we don't always see the meaning when it's happening, but it's there. If I believe that everything is perfect and simply is how it is, then how can I possibly say that there's anything wrong with me? And how can I possibly say that it's a mistake that I've been put here? And how can I possibly think, if I really believe that, how can I possibly think that I was just an accident thinking, look at, like, looking at how I look at myself and drop those comparisons and drop those judgments? It was just like, you know what, Chrissy? Your thighs are the perfect size. You know, your, whatever it is, how, how you exercise is exactly how you're supposed to exercise. What you do and say is exactly perfect because you're the only Chrissy. Then it really got me thinking beyond myself and like, well, what's, what's my, what is my piece of this big puzzle? And how much am I missing out on the ease of life because I think it's supposed to show up a certain way or happen a certain way? Or how can I possibly um, go through life just ex looking at what's around me and expect that I'm going to know what's best for the overall picture whenever I only get like a little piece of it? And that led me to like kind of looking at the blueprint of the body and just understanding that for however we were created, whatever put me here, designed my body, and my body runs very efficiently given certain circumstances. With the right nutrition, the right exercise, my body really thrives, and that's just the human body in general. So while I'm trying to figure out my purpose and why I'm here and all of that, if I'm ever going to really hit my full potential, if I'm ever going to really live into that, whatever it is that I'm here for, how can I really reach my full potential if I'm not even following the guidelines and the blueprint on how to run the human?